The Smash Bros. series has been a huge success. From 64 all the way up to today, the series has sold well, done well in critical reviews, and made its mark as an eSport. Smash is so successful that some characters are better known for their Smash appearances than their actual games. Captain Falcon, Marth, and Fox all come to mind. For Captain Falcon and Marth, it makes sense. Captain Falcon came from a racing game that Nintendo didn't really follow up on. And when Marth debuted in 1990, Fire Emblem was nowhere near the international hit franchise it is now. But for Fox, the story is different. Well before Smash 64, Star Fox was a popular character in a game with good sales figures. And good memes. Fox McCloud was already famous, but Smash would make him a legend. Hey guys, Bonk here, and if you'd like to get closer to that legendary skill level, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. We've got tons of resources to help you improve, like live coaching and a Discord to help find friendlies. And be sure to subscribe here to learn more about Smash. Smash 64 laid the foundation for what was to come. In the very first Smash title, Fox was fast, aggressive, and had some of the most creative combo potential in the game. To the point that the legendary Smash 64 player Isaiah has a playlist full of Fox combo contest material. 64 Fox's fast air, ground, and fall speed paired perfect with his multi-hit moves, and with a single-hit jab that is still one of the best confirms in all of Smash. But that's not all. Fox also has... a gun. In 64, Fox's lasers had insane hit stun. They could lead to combos and confirms, but they could also simply control neutral, or force players to shield in a game where the shield is very bad. Fox put those tools to work very quickly in 64, landing fourth in the first Smash Backroom tier list and second in the next one. He'd even convince prominent top players into joining his fleet, like Nintendo, who switched from Mario to Fox. However, as the 64 meta evolved, three main threats emerged. They were Pikachu, Kirby, and Falcon. Fox would fall into the high tier category alongside Yoshi and Jigglypuff. As time progressed, Fox's combo ability became less important. The big three had combos that were about as lethal, and often easier to execute. Kirby and Pikachu in particular had better recoveries and edgeguarding. As 64 got older, edgeguarding got more important as well. It also didn't help that Fox's worst matchup was Pikachu. Pikachu could crawl under Fox's lasers and kill Fox easily with a throw and an edgeguard. And the troublesome rodent only got more popular as 64 aged. But none of these meta shifts were the biggest problem for the Vulpine Space Sailor. The biggest problem was the banning of Hyrule Castle. Fox loved this stage. It was easily his best option because the wide middle space made it harder to put him into edgeguard scenarios. Fox could also use the HUD as a great combo extender. Best of all, the large amount of ground matched perfectly with his speed and projectile. He could dash around and fire lasers all day, basically turning 64 into its own on-rail shooter. If this strategy sounds dreadfully, oppressively campy, that's because it is. By 2014, Hyrule Castle had worn out its welcome. It was too large, too campy, and had a pretty obnoxious tornado hazard. Super Boom Fan would nail the coffin shut on Hyrule Castle when he showed just how campy the stage could be if a competitor were truly merciless. Truly merciless. Fittingly, a Fox main won that tournament. With only Dreamland present, Fox's matchup with Pikachu got a lot worse. Some players put it at 70-30 in the rat's favor. In the last few years, it's possible that Yoshi and Puff have surpassed Fox. Wizrobe's victories have been big for Yoshi, and Wangera's have been big for Puff. But it's not all bad news for Corneria's ace pilot. Fox still has incredible representation from a crew of Fox players called Treg, or TR3G. LD, the Z, and Hipster have done serious work on Fox in the past few years. With the Z branching out to other characters, LD is Fox's most promising champion. LD's insane reaction-based combos and tech chases highlight Fox's well-known strengths. But LD's most surprising strength is his recovery. LD is really good at mixing up Fox's limited recovery, regularly getting back on stage against very good players and characters. While Fox's up special is very easy to interrupt, he can drift really well after it's done. LD is so good at recovering with Fox that he can consistently beat top 50 level Pikachus. Many of Fox's moves have little nuances that can make a world of difference, giving him great room to grow, even in a game that's older than most of Ultimate's player base. So don't count McCloud out yet, he might make a return to 64's top tier. And even if he doesn't, Smash 64 isn't the game where Fox shines. 
Obviously, that's Melee. Fox has long been one of, if not the best character in Melee. When you take a look at the character, it's pretty easy to see why. Fox has insane frame data and speed, making the character's combo potential nearly as lethal as in Smash 64. And Smash 64 is pretty much, whoops, all combos, the game. Fox's grab game is great too. Fox can chain grab lots of characters and up throw up air is a pretty consistent kill confirm. Even Fox's recovery is decent, mostly because so long as he wasn't knocked too far or caught without a jump, he has a lot of ways to mix things up. Firefox angles, illusion shortens, shine stalls, a good fox can avoid doing the same option twice. And of course, fox has shine. In melee, shine activates instantly, is intangible, has a near-perfect knockback angle, and can be performed out of a jump, meaning it's also one of the best out-of-shield options in the game. This move is so good that it's iconic. Fox's shine is a regular feature on melee and Smash-branded things. Changes to the game's engine also massively benefited Fox. Wave dashing in particular gives Fox tons of additional options, like a ledge dash neutral air, one of the best anti-ledge trap tools in Smash history, or the legendary wave shine. But the results are where things get interesting. Despite the shine, the frame data, the breadth of options, Fox has never dominated melee. More specifically, a solo main Fox has never ranked number one or been the best player for a long stretch, nor has Fox had the prevalence of Bayonetta, Meta Knight, or arguably even 64's Pikachu. So, what's shooting Fox down? The simplest and most important thing in fighting games, human error. In Melee, Fox is simply too fast and too beautiful for our frail human hands. The fast fall speed that makes him fantastic at comboing also makes it easy to SD, even at the highest level. It makes him easy to combo and chain grab, too. The result is a very punishing character to play. One that can punish any opponent in nearly any mistake, but one that will punish the player for their own mistakes. Melee Fox demands perfection, a demand a lot of players have tried to meet. In the earliest days of Melee, Azin and Ken reigned supreme on Sheik and Marth. However, Fox had his early adherents. Most notably with Matt Deasy, the tournament organizer that helped start the West Coast Smash scene. And Chillin' Dude, the player and tournament organizer that helped start the East Coast Smash scene. Chillin' Dude would give Fox his earliest and strongest win when he beat Ken at Game Over back in 2004. In those days, Japan was rival to the US in Melee. In Japan's top Fox was Thunders, who was innovating his own combos and taking his own occasional win against Japan's top players. By the mid-2000s, Fox's potential became clear. Clear enough that PC Chris and Korean DJ, two top 10 players at the time, started a trend. They'd learn and main Fox alongside their other characters. This is common in Melee even now. It's widely believed Fox has the best matchup spread in Melee. Ken was actually the first top player to pick up Fox as a secondary. Chillin' Dude, PC Chris, and Korean DJ pushed Fox even further, but there was another player who'd do even more to make Fox and his shine iconic. Zalgadis. Zalgadis came up in the MLG days, getting an impressive fourth at MLG San Francisco, outplacing Isaiah at the time. But his legacy was less about skill and more about showmanship. Zalgadis made Fox's first major combo video, Shine Blind. In its heat feature, the Wave Shine, Shine Up Smash, Shine Drill, and lots of tech that would be mind-blowing for people who had never seen competitive Smash before. Zalgadis' combo video existed in a time where VODs and highlights weren't a search term away. With Shine Blind luring in new players and veterans using him as a secondary, Fox was doing well in Melee's early meta. But Fox would really pop off later as players explored the deep well of tech within Melee. As the years went on, Fox's player base would grow larger and more legendary. First, there were the dedicated mains, names like Lucky, S-Fat, Silent Wolf, and J-Man. Then, there were the even bigger names who co-mained Fox, like Mango and Mewtwo King. In pretty much every phase and every year of Melee, Fox had major representatives. By as early as 2008, he'd become the go-to secondary, and by 2010, he was the go-to main. Despite the popularity, it took until 2014, over a decade after the game's release, for Fox's two best players to emerge. And from Sweden, of all places. 2014 was a breakout year both for a new player named Leffen and a very familiar god named Armada. 
Armada had retired from Melee in late 2013 and returned in 2014. In his return, he found that his old main, Peach, couldn't cover his matchups. My plan for Fox right now is to use him against Fox and Jigglypuff, because those two matchups I really, really don't like with Peach. Armada was also a natural fit for Fox. Simply put, there was no player closer to perfect than him. Armada had long played a clean, optimal, and strategic style. Fox fit that style well because he had the tools to play optimally in nearly every scenario. The cleaner style also mitigated accidental deaths from risky mistakes. Then, there was Leffen. In 2014 and 15, Leffen was a hyperactive, bait-and-punish Fox. Using Fox's fast movements to trick opponents into committing, then punishing them for it. When it came to the punish, Leffen was masterful, regularly picking just the right option, then landing just the right follow-up. In 2015, both of these players reached a new peak and brought Fox up the mountain with them. Armada had successfully returned to the top of the standings, playing Fox increasingly often. Leffen had cemented himself as the God Slayer, beating every god. He destroyed Chillin' Dude in first to five, solidly marking himself as best solo Fox, and he ranked second in summer and third on the year. In addition, Mango played a heavy amount of Fox that year and ranked second. That meant three of 2015's top four players were Fox players, each of which had radically different styles. 2015 was a Fox renaissance that highlighted the character's versatility and creativity. It might be the best year Fox has had in Melee, and the second time the community was shined blind. Because in 2016, even more players were picking up Fox, most notably Plop. Before then, Plup was a speed demon spacey destroyer. His Samus had knocked Leffen out of EVO 2015. But like Armada, he felt he needed Fox for matchups Sheik and Samus couldn't cover. 2016 also saw the rise of Crush, one of the most unique players to pick up the character. In 2017, Hungrybox and Puff would at least put a stop to the Fox Golden Age. From 2017 and on, Hungrybox would float straight to the top. Once there, he'd sit on a throne made of Fox stock icons. Hungrybox's Puff presents the biggest real tier list threat Fox has seen since Ken and Mewtwo King's Marth. Hungrybox has done so well that pros like Armada put Puff above Fox. However, Puff also made Fox into even more of a hero. Armada and Plup would both use Fox to defeat Hungrybox in big moments and bring Puff down to Earth. At EVO 2018, Leffen would do the same, beating Hungrybox and Armada and scoring the biggest win a Fox solo main had ever seen. Puff Fox had become another melee-defining matchup. Fox's old tier list threat, Marth, has returned as well. The Fox-Marth matchup has long been up for debate. Right now, the debate is in favor of Marth, as Zane has functionally become the walking, talking, zoning god of death to Fox mains. Don't Rough. think that matchup's like, Zane's making it undoable. And that's like, good for him, he's doing an amazing job, but like, he's yeah. making that matchup feel undoable. But these existential threats are what make Fox so entertaining. Fox is fundamentally fallible while still having infinite potential. That makes him a great top character and a great mascot for Melee. He shares the game's depth, speed, and raw creativity while also sharing the game's demanding and punishing nature. Fox would do decently in Brawl, but after Melee, decent was a disappointment. In Brawl, Fox was a mid-tier with unrealized potential. In keeping with Nintendo tradition, Fox took a hit for being the best in the previous game. In Brawl, Fox's shine wouldn't have nearly the applications it did in Melee. His kill options, confirms, and combos were all weaker as well. However, his speed, hitboxes, and specials made him genuinely good in neutral. But that same speed hurt his survivability. His fast falling speed made him very easy to chain grab, which was a big part of the Brawl meta. Changes to knockback growth meant that, despite being a middleweight now, he died very early as well. Strong and neutral, hard to pin down, and capable in some ways, Fox was far from bad. But he had three notably bad matchups, Pikachu, Sheik, and most importantly, Ice Climbers. These characters all abused Fox's fast fall speed and put him in grab loops, or in Sheik's case, tilt loops. On the other hand, Fox went even or won against popular picks like DDD and Falco. The problem was that, throughout Brawl, it didn't make sense to solo main Fox. Top-tier characters had higher ceilings and better matchups. Top players like Nakat would switch off Fox. Plus, there were two other Spaceys who were arguably better than him. But by this point, Fox was so iconic that he still got some love. In the US, Trevante and Ullman Trump led the way with the character. However, the best Fox players were international. TKD from Mexico and Yui from Japan. TKD was the definition of a hidden boss. He rarely traveled, but when he did, he'd cause a stir. 
pushing top players like Tyrant, Larry Lur, and Mr. R to their limit. TKD really showcased how well Fox could move and press the advantage in Brawl's engine. In Japan, Yui did so well that the Japanese tier list put Fox in high tier. Yui also went toe-to-toe -to -toe with top Japanese players and pushed Japan to pick up Sheik as a counter. In the process, he improved Fox's disadvantage, interfering with or simply taking advantage of dropped loops and using Shine to stall Fox's landings. Brawl is quietly one of Smash's more unexplored titles. It's a game with a lot of character depth and unique niche mechanics. There's a chance Fox could still outperform expectations in modern Brawl with more time or labbing. In truth, Fox has high-tier potential in Brawl. Mewtwo King, TDK, and many Japanese players put him up there. But the character had an awkward fit in the meta, didn't have many traveling players, and never got the results to prove it in Brawl's heyday. In Smash 4, Fox would return to prominence. This time at the hands of a famous Brawl Falco main, Larry Lur. Fox's rise in Smash 4 was surprising. Smash 4 buffed shields and defensive options and nerfed some offensive options. On face, that seems rough for a character that's synonymous with Rushdown. But Fox's struggle has always been disadvantage, his fall speed making him combo food, and his weight and recovery making him easy to kill. Smash 4 buffed defense on the whole, which along with buffs to his side special and up special, made disadvantage pretty manageable for Fox. Meanwhile, Fox's offense fit well into Smash 4's engine. Fox's versatile up tilt was a perfect match with perfect pivoting. Fox's up smash was a great out of shield and kill option, his neutral air led to kills again, his forward air had drag down potential, and his up air was great for juggling. His up tilt caught below the ledge for some reason. But above all, Fox was fast. Fox had speed. That speed sustained Fox across Smash 4's shifting metas and DLC-defined landscape. Smash 4 Fox was one of the most consistent characters in Smash history, ranking 7th across all Smash backroom tier lists. It was in no small part because Larry Lur was an insanely consistent competitor. He ranked between 5th and 10th on every PGR except the last one. Larry's biggest moments would tend to be Fox's biggest moments as well. At CEO 2016, Larry would become the second player in Smash 4 history to 3-0 the best player in Smash 4's history. At Mexico Saga, he'd do even better. He'd become the first ever to beat Smash 4's Rank 1 player in a Grand Finals reset. In the process, he secured one of Fox's biggest tournament wins in Smash 4. Larry Lur wasn't Fox's only rep either. Fox gained a lot more traction, bringing in players like Nakat, Charlie the King, ZD, Mega Fox, Shogun, and Light. Towards the end of Smash 4, Light picked up the mantle from Larry Lur. Light placed an impressive fourth at Shine 2018 and Smash and Splash 4. Oh yeah, he beat me there too. Good games, Paris. In many ways, Fox returned to glory in Smash 4. Bayonetta would terrorize Fox, as she did many characters, and she'd loom much larger in the game's history. But by the end of Smash 4, Fox was a guaranteed top 10 character, and for a solid chunk of players, a top 5 character. Fox busted. Fox is so good. Light would carry on Fox's momentum into the next and newest Smash title, Ultimate. A game well designed for Fox. Ultimate's engine is all around faster than Smash 4's. Shield is nerfed substantially, combos are generally longer, kill confirms are more common and consistent, and speed is more important than ever. In the beginning, Fox looked every bit the top tier, maybe even a top 5 character. Fox had a lot of tools that thrived in the early meta. His primary kill move, Up Smash, was also a good out of shield option, meaning he punished misspacing and misplaced aggression pretty hard. His moves were also very active, making them trickier to whiff punish. Neutral air in particular is still hard to punish and leads to up smash. And while Fox's recovery is exploitable, it took time and practice to exploit. Even the best struggled to get it right away. It also helped that Light played Fox. Light is a top 10 player, and in the early days, he was really on fire. He mastered parrying well before most of the competition, accessing surprise punishes on opponents. His fast and aggressive playstyle naturally fit the engine too, resulting in him getting 3rd at Glitch 6, 5th at Genesis 6, and 5th at Frostbite 2019, beating players like MKLeo and ESAM along the way. This meant Fox got off to a hot start. Smash Player Inctivate aggregated top player tier lists to make something like what Smash Backroom did. In the second month tier list, Fox snuck right into top 5. But it didn't take long for Fox to lose some of his spark. About seven months later, Fox had slipped out of the top 10 on that same list. Nowadays, he floats between high and top tier, depending on the list. Usually just outside of the top 10. So what happened? 
For starters, Fox isn't the only Spacey in town anymore. Falco and Wolf steal some of his shine, figuratively anyways. Falco is definitely worse than Fox, but the bird better fits the pure combo and edgeguard heavy vision of the Spacey. Currently, Wolf outranks Fox for most players, and Wolf better fits the vision of the Spacey that dominates neutral with speed and hitboxes. Fox has his own distinct identity, but he loses out on player base now because he has more competition than in Smash 4. Both Larry Lur and Charlie the King switched to Wolf in Ultimate. Light also cooled off a bit. He still secured rank 10 on both editions of the PGRU, but in the beginning of the game, he was up for top 5. Light cooled down in part because players learned how to fight Fox. Players became better at edgeguarding him, they respected his defensive up smash more, and they played safer when they were in neutral air up smash range. Without neutral air and up smash, Fox has a tougher time taking stocks. And of course, Fox's disadvantage was always tough in ultimate. He's back to being combo food, and he can especially struggle against disjointed moves that beat his out. But this smash icon still has also grown in the meta. Fox's ledge trapping has improved a lot, helping him get kills. His neutral air is one of the best ledge trapping moves in Ultimate, and his forward smash is a lethal and surprisingly low risk option. Foxes have also improved their disadvantage using old tricks, namely using Shine to reversal and stall, using Illusion to cover ground and regain stage control, and even using forward air to gain height. They've also incorporated instant dash attacks to juice up the combo game. In terms of player base, Fox is doing well too. Fox may not be as popular as in Smash 4, and definitely not as Melee, but Fox still has lots of great representatives like Louie Money, Mega Fox, Comet, ZD, and now Man. Man is one of Japan's fastest rising talents. He's got big placements and wins, and more interestingly, a very different style from Light. Man is more like Smash 4 Larry Lur. Man uses Fox's speed to scare opponents. He often switches between spamming moves and purely empty movement, baiting the opponent into their doom. Ultimate Fox isn't as strong as in Melee, or even in Smash 4, but the character still has the depth to allow for multiple styles and still has the speed to be the glass cannon everyone loves to watch. Fox may not be top tier now, but with two great mains and plenty of popularity, his future is bright as ever, and even if he didn't do well, he'd still be one of the most successful Smash characters ever. Fox is an ace in his own game and a trump card in Smash. He's maintained remarkable status as one of the game's most exciting characters, always fast, always fragile, and always full of a hard-to-realize potential. It's no wonder he became Melee's iconic character, and a huge crowd favorite in every Smash title. Fox may have been born a pilot, but he feels destined to be a fighter. What do you think? Is there any character more iconic to Smash than Fox? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and check out ProGuides.com.